Okay, well we're going to show um, how to implement the R scripting engine into an XNA project so you can provide mod support to your games or uh, just build your entire game through scripts rather than hard coding it. Which has its advantages. The bigger projects you don't have to worry about recompiling the whole engine. You can just shut down the game, restart it, um, and see your script changes take effect. You can get R scripting by going to rscript.codeplex.com. Uh, the current version is 1.2. R scripting allows for dynamically compiling scripts, accessing and modifying their properties during runtime, method invoking, and dynamic type instancing. The downloads you can get download you can download 1.2, which is the latest version. Um, it's the most stable. Documentation doesn't look like a whole lot of documentation, but this is really all you need in order to get the engine added to your solution and uh, explain how to write scripts and compile them during runtime. You're also accessing the scripts properties and methods while your game is running. Also, the the source code is fully available as well. So we're going to create a new project, XNA game, and we're going to go to references and add, you'll have to browse wherever you downloaded it to, but mine I already got it so under recent I can go, and there's my R scripting engine. So a couple things we'll need to do up here. In the field area, we'll need to add the scripting engine. So, our scripting dot compile engine compiler, and then our script dot late binding dot script factory factory. So, the compiler is the actual the, the compile engine is actually what compiles your scripts into a into a library that your in, that your game or your Windows application can use. And then the script factory is what holds all the scripts that the compile engine compiled, and you can get access to them from there. It's kind of like a big, uh, big library of all your all your scripts. So under game, we're going to instance our compiler, and give it an extension of dot script. And then under load content, that's where we will perform our initial compilation during startup. So, compiler. Well, first, uh, first what we want to do is check and make sure that our compile directory exists. So, system.io.directory exists. We'll create it if it doesn't exist. And then next we will compile it. Uh, I forgot to do this. Scripts. So check if it has check if it compiled successfully or not. We'll create a bool. Compiled. Okay. Equals compiler dot compile. Scripts. If Compiled, okay. Do something else, do something. Okay, for testing we're going to say uh, window.title equals compiled without error. And if it did fail, we're going to say window.title equals fail to compile. So next we need to just add a new item. Uh, where's text files in here? There we go. And we'll call it game info dot text. Actually dot script. 
Okay. And this will be inside of our inside of a folder called scripts. Okay, so we will copy if newer, but we will not come oops, we will no, no, do not copy. Game info. Copy if newer. And the scripts folder. Uh, I'm not going to assume. Let's take a look here. There's our scripts folder. If I go into here, we have our scripts folder and our game info script now. Where the executable is at. So we'll create a quick... Uh, Using system quick script namespace my namespace public class game info public string game title get set. Okay, and you can even come underneath here and do public. Build a constructor info game title equals my game 1.0. So we have our script. We can go back to our game class now, and if it compiled without an error, we'll run it. And we'll see that that it did compiled without error. over here guarantee though if you forget the semicolon take it out try and compile it it'll tell you that it failed to compile you're not going to know the errors unless you want to see the errors when you can output the errors or you can um, to a text file all of the all of the errors are available under in uh, compiler dot errors right there you can get access to them all so I'll put those to a text file or a console or something. So, what we want to do is if it compiled without any errors, we want to change the the window dot title to our game title, which is this variable here. So we will take our factory. The factory, in order for it to get access to your scripts, it needs to compile the needs the assembly that those scripts were compiled into, and that's not available until after you perform the compilation. So once you've done that, you need to create a new instance of your factory equals new, and provide it with the compile with the assembly that the compiler just compiled, right there, compiled assembly. Now it'll have a copy of all your running scripts or all of your available scripts. So we'll come here. And we'll get our, our game title by doing uh, our script binding script object obj equals factory dot get uh, get script game info and then this dot window dot title equals obj dot Get property dot game title and it failed. Oh, this is this here is um this is a dynamic. This is part of the new C sharp 4.0, and if you want to use that, the engine supports it. So if you want to use it, you'll need to go and add reference dot net. Microsoft.c-sharp and then that will work and it failed to compile we forgot our colon still save that run it again and there it is my game version 1.0 and the really cool thing about it now is that you can close this we can open up our explorer we can run our game. There's my game version 1.0. Close it down. Go to scripts. Open it up. And there's our script. And I can change this to be crazy new script 
based game. Close my script and just rerun my game. And there it is, crazy new script based game. So you can build your entire game using scripts without having to open Visual Studio once your initial your initial uh, client is built. Going back to Visual Studio though. Um, next, I want to show you don't have to use this one. So if you want, in case you're going to um, like the Xbox, Xbox isn't natively supported. But we'll go here, Microsoft C Sharp, and we'll remove this. So you can see it'll fail to compile this dynamic expression. So what you got to do is you got to do get property game title like that, and then just cast it. And then there you go, crazy new script base game. Also, if you want, you can see here it says my game. Oh, this is a. Uh, that's uh, not right, actually. Uh, let's see here. Is it? Did we copy? No. Copy of newer. That's why I want to copy always. There we go. My game version 1.0. So, what if I want to change this pragmatically? I could do so by coming here and before I set it to my window title I can do obj set property game in game title this game will be cool and then there you go I was able to set the property pragmatically through my code so you can be running through your game the player can get uh, some sort of bonus thing or whatever you can set that property temporarily and then revert it back to the original by keeping a, keeping a copy of it someplace or whatever. You can do a lot of adjusting and manipulating through the code if you want to. Last thing is I want to show is that we can do also um, what if we want to display a message box. We can public or invoke a, me a method. So we'll go public void show message System dot windows dot forms dot message box dot show hello world. So we're going to show this message box. However, natively or by default, the scripting engine only references MS Core lib system system dot core and R scripting. Actually, I don't even think it references our scripting by default. You'd have to add that reference yourself as well. But since our script is now using a message box, we need to add, we need to reference this this library. And we can do that under load content right up here, right before we right before we compile it. You're gonna go to compiler. Dot add assembly reference system. Dot windows. Dot forms. Dot dll. And then if it compiled, okay, we're going to set our window title. And then we're going to invoke the obj.invoke method show message. Start it, and there's our message box. So what you could do is, even though by default these do not inherit, um, scripts are not uh, by default uh, you can let's see here you can also go uh, references let's see here what if we wanted to create I can't remember I need to look here add new item XNA game component what's this framework dot framework all right so we want to make our script uh, uh, we want to add, let's see, compiler dot add assembly reference Microsoft dot XNA dot framework dot DLL. Okay. And then we can extend this game drawable game component. Public override void draw 
game time, game time. Base dot draw. And, you know, you can do whatever codes down through here that you want. As long as, and then once you come through here, you can also do, um, you can check if obj dot dot instance dot well, let's see here yeah obj dot instance that's the actual script instance itself get tight dot um, get interface yes because we want to implement i draw game component. So got and you can do a search. I draw game component. Or just game component. Okay, so we can check now. Uh Uh, we'll just do it like this for now. Uh, if uh, long story short, without trying to build a whole bunch of code, is you can check and see if it implements the i drawable or i game component, and then you can just do this dot components dot add obj dot instance because that's the actual instance object itself and then when your game comes down here and every time it draw it calls draw on your game your scripts draw will also be invoked so you can or your scripts update method so you can do a whole bunch of uh, all your scripts in that manner you don't even have to worry about having to come into the engine here and code it yourself so that's been a quick review of our scripting with XNA. Um, again, take a look at take a look at it at rscript.codeplex.com, and you can also visit scionwest.net. This is my blog that I keep up. Uh, I discuss our scripting with it. I discuss discuss my other project, Mud Designer, which also uses our scripting. Um, I discuss uh, just programming topics in general, such as saving type data dynamically, a lot of different you know, example code and stuff like that. To, so, um, check it out, subscribe to it, and uh, like the video and leave any comments or questions. Thanks.